Hi there. In this video, I will show you how to create a data extension using the Email Studio in Salesforce Marketing Cloud. So right now I'm in the overview of Salesforce Marketing Cloud and I'll just navigate to Email Studio. So we can close this one and once we're here, we can actually navigate on the top to uh, subscribers and in the drop down you'll find data extensions and this brings me to this overview so if you're new to marketing cloud um, these data extensions may be there by default it may also slightly differ uh, because basically these are system generated data extensions uh, maybe we'll go into that in a different video on the left hand side you can also see other things such as uh, profile management, preference management. These are more things if um, you're working with such things as lists, uh, which, which I may cover later. But right now I'm going to focus to focus on uh, data extensions. So clicking on that, I can uh, find the create button on the top right. I can click create. And now I can choose uh, different options. I'll just go for standard data extension right now. Okay, great. So now I'm getting into this menu. I can choose to create a data extension from a template or from an existing data extension, but I want to create. And I'll simply call it um, subscribers data extension one. I can also choose to give it an external key. Uh, this can be useful if you're um, using the API or whatnot, but Usually you don't have to worry too much about this and it will be auto-filled. If you want, you can also give it a description. We'll skip that. And uh, two very important options are if you want to make this data extension sendable and testable. So if you ever want to uh, use email addresses in this data extension and send an email to it, you'll definitely want to make sure it's sendable. Optionally, you can also link it to a campaign. Now, to be honest, I have not used this feature too much myself. Um, so I'm going to skip that. And next, we can choose a data retention policy. So a data retention policy allows you to wipe records in this data extension or even wipe the data extension itself after a given time. Uh, this may be for compliance reasons. This uh, may be because you simply want to keep a tidy database. But for now, uh, this is not relevant, so we'll just leave it to off. All right, great. And now we get to the most important section, which is where we can define the fields of our data extension. You can think of this pretty much as the columns that we'll have later on, because um, essentially a data extension, it's a bit like a table. It helps to visualize a table in Excel in your mind's eye. Um, and for this one, we're talking about subscribers. So let's take, uh, let's start with email. And notice that now I can define the data type. So obviously an email address would be data type email address. Um, but let me quickly cover the other options. So let's say um, the main other options that we have would be text, number, date, boolean. So text means uh, you could actually type a number in, right? It just means a text string. Uh, the system considers it as a text value, whereas a number can only be a uh, numerical character. Uh, date in Marketing Cloud is uh, something quite special because it's uh, actually date time, uh, meaning you can also have the, the hour and the minutes uh, included. Um, and uh, dates are uh, saved in uh, specific time zones, uh, which is something you want to consider, especially if your organization is not based um, in the default time zone of Marketing Cloud or if you're a global organization. And in addition, we have Boolean, so that would simply be true or false. Um, so that could be the status, for instance. So, but now we're talking about first name. So let's take text, uh, then add last name. Also text, that's fine. We could, for instance, say status uh, or uh, active rather. And we're going to say a Boolean. So active would mean it is a uh, true or false. Now, um, this will suffice for this demo, uh, but there are a few other things I want to add. So first off, you can see that there's this checkbox called primary key. 
Um, a primary key ensures that the values that we're going to provide for the email address are unique. And it also gives some other options. And in this case, I actually want to make use of that. Secondly, there's also a column that says nullable. So nullable means if we um, have to provide a value or not. So nullable means Marketing Cloud will accept a null value or no value uh, for a first name. And actually, I want, to, uh, I want to have that. So I'll say first name and last name. They can be empty in case we don't know them about our subscribers. And lastly, um, active should always be uh, true or false. So I don't really want to make it nullable, but I could add a default value. And in this case, the default value I'll uh, take is true, meaning that any subscribers we add to this list will be active by default unless we specify that they're not. Just in a nutshell, some basic features. There's also something called the send relationship. Um, the send relationship defines which field um, you're going to relate to your subscribers uh, based on, in this case, subscriber key. Um, I may talk more about this in a future video, but subscribers is essentially the master list of all your contacts inside of Email Studio. It actually um, matches the notion of contacts in Contact Builder, which I'll cover later as well. And um, there's two options, subscriber key or subscriber ID. For now, let's take subscriber key and we'll say that email relates on it. This basically means that we already mentioned earlier that in this table, email address will always be unique because um, it has primary key flagged. But in addition, we're also going to say that it's this is actually the unique identifier uh, linked to the subscriber key for our master table of all contacts, which is a very key notion in, a, uh, in Salesforce Marketing Cloud. Grant, so we defined a field so we can now create our data extension and it'll return us to this overview screen, but let's just have a quick look if that uh, looks like we expected. So on the left hand side, you can see that an external key has been automatically populated. Um, as I mentioned before, uh, you can also see that it's used for sending. You can see the subscriber relationship. And lastly, we can see the different fields that we added, including uh, their settings. We can still edit this if we like. Um, what we can also do is have a peek at records, which is uh, where we will add records later on, but which is of course still empty for now. That's it. Hey there, it's Anthony again. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to subscribe to our channel. That way, whenever we put new videos online, you'll be notified automatically. Thank you and have a great day.